Good morning. My name is Chris Miller and this is Miller Outdoors. This morning we're taking Smokey here on his first official hare hunt. He's lightly started, which means he's scent trailed, but he's still pretty green. I'm pairing him with an experienced dog to help keep him on the rabbit. And with any luck, we'll help him chew into his first rabbit this morning. Now let's cut him loose and get to it. Turn him up. Who just struck up in here? I just struck. It didn't take long. We didn't get up in here a hundred yards and they jumped on him. Time to get down to business. Heading straight away. Hey, do me a favor. If you like this sort of thing, if you take a second and hit that little thumbs up button down below the video, it'll really help me out here on YouTube and I'd appreciate it. The best thing for me to do right now is to slide over there to where he started that rabbit. Where the first barking was is one of your best bets early on to try to get a look at him because chances are he'll make a big circle. And it's better than 50-50, he'll come right back through that spot. So let's head over. Here they come, coming right at us. Coming right smack at us. Where are you, you son of a gun? Where the heck are you? Looks like he might be going around us to the left. and then he turned going up and away. I'm gonna stay right here where they jumped. This is still the highest probability spot for me to be. As of yet, he really hasn't patterned himself, so I'm gonna stay right here for a bit, see what happens. They've been running this rabbit for about an hour now, and he's he's been running fairly small, but I haven't got a look at him yet. I've got an idea he's probably a smaller rabbit, a young one. The young ones tend to run like this sometimes. They'll They'll stay small, but be all over the place. And as expected, that lightly started pup is in and out of the run. He's in it sometimes, and other times he's out of it. That's real typical. Uh, but I'm pleased that he's in it more than he's out of it. I think I've got an idea where I've got to go to get a look at this thing. He's been through one section he's been through three times now. I'm going to move right in there and see if I can get a look at him. I couldn't get all the way to the place I wanted to go because if I'd have kept moving, I'd have got busted. I said to stop short because the dogs were turning and came right at me. As soon as they go by me again, I'll slide over where I ultimately really want to be. But I don't want to do anything that makes this rabbit run unnatural. He stopped short of us that time and turned away, so now we can take this opportunity to move in where I really want to be. One thing I want to point out, I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea when they see me pull back this hammer when the rabbit is on its way to me. With a pistol, it's different than a long gun. With a long gun, I hit the safety off and pull the trigger in almost the same motion. I never have the safety off a shotgun. It's just a habit I get into, and I think it's, it's wise. With a pistol, it's a different story because the noise this makes that click, that's a very loud click. If you, if you pull that back as you're drawing up on a rabbit, many times they hear it. And I can't, you can't get on a rabbit with a very small sight plane like this and pull the hammer back as you're on the rabbit. It doesn't work because as you're pulling this hammer back, there's such force required to pull it back that you can't stay on your target. So you've really got to cock the gun before you expect to see the rabbit. With a long gun, it's completely different and I would never do that. I just don't want anybody to get the wrong idea. When you see me pulling the hammer back in anticipation of the rabbit, it's only with this type of, of handgun that I do that because it's absolutely necessary. Now he just went through that same spot again. You've got to move about 70 yards. I imagine there's a real thick spot because he's gone through it from numerous directions. Let's slide it in there and see what we can do. 
sneaking along a little stream here to try to get a look at this rabbit. And I believe we got a coyote. Coyote got killed here. Yep. It's a size comparison. That's a size 12. He hasn't been dead all that long. Funny color to him. Something got him. He's got kind of a cool strawberry blonde color. Especially across his backside. That's real strawberry blonde. Very cool. All right, we gotta go get a look at this rabbit. Turn and coming back. It's so thick right in here where he's been running that all I've got to shoot on is this little moose lane, and I don't have, won't have more than a split second. It's gonna be a quick situation here. Hopefully he takes a little stutter step when he crosses this, just a little pause. I might probably try to whistle at him. <whistles> Crap, that was fast. I tried whistling, but he put on the afterburners. Damn it. Damn! I tried whistling, but he only went faster, the little bastard. Now we're in the right spot. That's, man, I even knew he was coming and I still didn't have enough time. That's, all right. Well, he'll be back. He's only about 40 yards ahead of the dog. I'm just going to post up right here. One of these times he's going to make a little stutter step when he comes through here. And when he does, I'm going to lay the hammer on him. Here he comes again. cover it all. Matter of fact, in this type of thick crap, if you try to cover too much, you end up not covering anything. So he's been over through here within about 20 feet three times, and now he's been once behind me. So I don't know. Let's come right through this. Come right through this thicket twice. He's not running real big. Should probably be able to get a look at him right here, but can't shoot more than 15 feet, which is fine. It's perfect place for a little handgun. The nice thing about when hair come through thick little patches like this, real thick cover, they're not generally too difficult to get a shot at. It's kind of tight quarters in here, so I won't be able to shoot off to my left very well. If he comes from my left, I'm going to have to shoot him left-handed. Damn, what the hell is he? He's right here. Comes. 
Yeah, it's the end of him. I knew we'd come through here again. Little guy. He's a good eating size, a nice young one. What's this right here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Good boy. Good boy. Okay, dead, 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 dead. Good boy. You did a good job. Good job. Dead, dead, dead. Let him go. Let him go. Good boy. Dead. What's that? What's that? Good. Whoa, good boy. Good boy. Okay, okay, okay. You're an animal. You are. Good boy. Let him go. Good boy. Good boy. You did a good job today. The pup wasn't in the run the whole time, but he was in there quite a bit. And the most important thing is that he ended up with the rabbit at the end and got to chew into him. That was pretty cool. And if you've ever taken the first rabbit in front of a pup, leave a comment down below the video and tell me about it. I'd be interested to hear. It's a giant step forward in his gun dog journey. Experiences like this really helps a dog of this age. Will he ultimately make a rabbit dog? Who knows? At this point, only time will tell. But he's off to a good start. And I know he'll be given plenty of opportunities to realize his potential. In his next step of his journey, he's going to be hunted over solo so he can improve. Hey, thanks for watching, and until next time, keep your dogs tired and your powder dry, amigos. Come on, boys, stay with me now. Good job, guys. That was cool.